السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to my channel To carry on with the general anatomy lectures and the skeletal system In this presentation I'm gonna discuss the bones I'm Dr. Daria Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt The objectives of my presentation will be about First, we will talk about the function of the bones, then the classification of the bones, then the structure of the long bone, and finally, the blood supply of the long bone. The most important function of the bone is to support the body, as the skeletal system provides a framework for the human body. So imagine that our body has no skeleton, so we'll end up as a melted structure like this. Next we have protection. The skeleton protects other important body parts. For example, the thoracic cage protects the heart in the middle and the two lungs on each side. Also, the skull surrounds and protects the brain. Another important function of the bones is Together with the muscles and joints produce locomotion as muscles are attached to the bones, thus they move the joints. You can see here the simple animation for the biceps and the triceps and the elbow joint. When the biceps contracts, it flexes the elbow, while when the triceps contracts, it extends the elbow. So, with the help of the muscles, bones and joints, you can put your body into whatever position you like. Next, we have an, a very important function of bones, which is hemopoiesis or blood cell formation, which is formed inside the red bone marrow. Also, the yellow bone marrow helps in fat storage. Another important function of the bones is to store mineral. Since the inorganic matrix of the bones is composed of minerals like calcium and phosphorus and in this diagram you can see the normal bony density and you can compare it to a disease like osteoporosis when there is decrease in this bony density. And we can notice this in all people when there is decrease in the bony density and weakness of the bones that can no longer be able to hold the back bones. There are many classification of the bones inside our body. We can classify them either according to their position or according to their shape or the way they develop or according to their structure. So according to their position, we have either axial bones, which lies within the axial skeleton, and we have the appendicular bones which lies within the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeletons includes the bones that form or make up the head, the neck and the trunk, like the skull, the mandible and the vertebrae, also the sternum and the ribs. While the appendicular skeleton includes the bones that form the extremities, the upper limb and the lower limb. So in the upper limb we have the shoulder girdle made of the clavicle and the scapula the humerus in the arm, the radius and the ulna in the forearm, and the bones of the hand. While in the lower limb we have the pelvic girdle or the hip bone, the femur which lies in the thigh, the tibia and fibula in the legs, and the bones of the foot. According to the shape of the bones, we have first the long bones, which are found in the extremities as the femur. Also we have short bones. The only example here are in the wrist bones or the ankle bones. We call them the carpals in the hand or the tarsals in the foot. The carpals present at the base of the hand and they look like cubes. Flat bones as in the scapula or the bone which lies at the back of the thorax and forms the shoulder girdle. This is its front view and this is its side view. Irregular bones has no specific shape as in the vertebrae. Next we have the nomadic bones. They are special bones which contain air sacs within them as we can find in some skull bones. 
And finally, we have what's called sesamoid bones. These are small bones that lies within some tendons in our body, as the patella, which lies within the quadriceps tendon in front of the knee joint. The second classification according to the development of the bones or the way they ossified. So according to the development, we have either membranous bones, they develop through a process called the intramembranous ossification, as in flat bones of the skull. Or we have cartilaginous bones, which develop by a process called the intracartilaginous ossification. For example, the long bones in our body. According to the structure uh, of the bones, we can classify them into either compact bone, they are dense and ivory-like, they are found in the cortex of the bones, and the other type is cancellous bones, they are spongy-like, and they are found at the ends of the long bones and fill most of the irregular bones. For the structure of the long bone, the main parts of the long bones are first we have the shaft or diaphysis, and two ends we call them epiphysis. Each epiphysis is covered by a hyaline cartilage or articular cartilage. In the growing bone, there is what is called epiphyseal growth plate, which is an articular disc between the diaphysis and the epiphysis that allows bone growth. We can here compare the appearance of the adult bone with the growing bone. Here you can see this dark line which represents the epiphyseal growth plate. It disappears when the bone is fully grown. If we cut the long bone, we can see that its cortex is made of compact bone. Its medulla is formed of spongy bone containing the red bone marrow. While in the shaft, the medulla is replaced by a cavity, we call it medullary or marrow cavity, containing yellow bone marrow, which stores fat tissue. In this picture of the head of the femur, you can notice the cortex, which is made of compact bones or dense bones, and the medulla, which is formed of spongy bone or cancellous bone. Also, you can see the difference between the red bone marrow and the yellow bone marrow. Around the bone, there is a membrane called periosteum. Finally, what are the sources of blood supply to the long bone? The main blood supply is through the nutrient artery, which get inside the bone through a specific foramen, we call it a nutrient foramen, and then travels within the medullary cavity and splits into ascending and descending branches. Also, we have epiphyseal arteries, metaphyseal arteries at the junction between the epiphysis and the diaphysis and finally periosteal arteries which are related to the periosteal membrane covering the bones and this is the end of my presentation thanks for listening if you like it please do not forget to subscribe like and share and also hit the notification bell so you know if I upload another video. Thank you.